guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk Leeds United. It's finally over. The international break is 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 done. Pretty much done. We've got forty about forty eight hours till we play Norwich. Um, three things I hate in life: slow walkers, getting changed after swimming, and the international break. So thank God that's done. We're going to jump into your uh, Norwich City match preview. But before we do that, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And get your comments in the section below, guys, after the video. It means a lot. And I reply to every single one of them. So, without further ado. Guys, I'm going to timestamp uh, this video. So, if there's something you don't want to watch or can't be asked to watch, then just look below in the description and you'll be able to fast forward to something you might be a bit more interested in. But here's my uh, predicted starting lineup. Uh, you can't quite see that because it's off the screen. But in goal is obviously going to be Meslier. Um Obviously, we saw uh, Archie Gray uh, right back against Bristol City, but I think it's going to be Ailing who starts there this week. And we'll get into that in a minute. Just go through the rest of the team first. I think it'll be Rodon and Strelk um, continuing their brilliant partnership that they're starting to develop together. Um, and Sam Byram at left back, who has been, do you know what? After Ampadu, probably, probably, and Perot, probably our best signing. Um, he's been brilliant. Sam Byram. Um, so yeah, really pleased with him. Um in the in the in the double pivot, I think we're gonna have Ampadu and Kamara. Um Ampadu's been our player of the season so far. And Kamara, you know, you saw glimpses of his class against Bristol City, his delicate little touches, his quick passing, a confident passing. You know, sometimes I don't know for those of you who have or or still do play football. He, you know, the, the little passes in between a, you know, in between two opponents in, in important positions in the important position in the on the pitch, you know, in the centre of midfield. If you lose it there, you're under the cosh, and he, he threads the pass through with ease and with confidence, and I love that about him. So, I think them two will start there. Um, Somerville on the left, James on the right, um, Jorginho up top, and Perot in the ten. Um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about where's where where uh, Perot's best position is, but um, I, I I think he looks he's starting to look better and better in that role, and um, he's got such a deadly finish. He's one of those players who doesn't necessarily need to see a lot of the ball, but when he does get the ball, he's picking it up in dangerous positions, and he can be you know a real deadly player. So I I think that's how. Um, we're going to start. And the reason I've, I've put um, Ailing right back and, you know, Archie Gray, not even in the double pivot with Ampadu, it's because simply um, I think Archie Gray, he needs a rest, man. He really needs a rest. Um, and he, he just played three 90 minutes for England. Uh, Daniel Farker sort of expressed how not unhappy, but um, well, a little bit unhappy was that he'd done that. He was sort of hoping he might get a rest in one of the games. And obviously, just before the international break, we had two games. And and I, I think he's played five games in two weeks. And for such a young lad, it, it's it's a bit much, you know. So I, I've got a feeling we might we might see him rested for this game. Um, I don't necessarily know if I want him to be rested. I want him to have a rest at some point. Um so maybe this is the week just to just to just to give him a rest, bring him on, get him involved the last half an hour or something. But I, I got a feeling we might see Archie Gray um, drop out of uh, drop to the bench this week. But the rest of it looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty confident with that team. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think the starting lineup will be, and if you would give Archie Gray a rest in this game, or or would you choose to do it? Because um, obviously we got we got another game midweek, haven't we? So. It's, it comes thick and fast, so um, maybe he might look to rest in this week and then start him midweek. But yeah, get your comments in, guys. Let me know what you think of uh, your starting lineup will be. A bit like us, uh, their goals are sort of uh, littered around the team. Um, obviously, you know we all know Josh Sargent is a half decent player. They've got um, Adam Ida, but their main threat seems to be um, their young winger, jo uh, Jonathan Rowe, who scored seven goals and got two assists uh, in all competitions this season. Um, very tricky winger, um, very agile, um, very skillful, and very direct as well. Um, so he he is one that we definitely need to uh, to, to keep an eye on um, in this game. Um, you know, if if we can keep him quiet, then um, we stop a lot of a lot of their main threat will be sort of isolated and he'll be um, 
fa- uh, facing up against Sam Byram. So um, I'm much more confident um, in him coming up against Byram than I am uh, Luke Ayling. Um, but maybe, um, you know, Ayling might not be there. It might be Archie Gray, in, in which case I'll be a bit more confident. But yeah, I'm happy that Byram is a Jonathan Rose matchup. And um, if Byron can do a job on him and keep him quiet, then then it increases our chances in that game massively. As you can see from the uh, image on your screen, um, Norwich play a similar, exact same pretty much formation as Leeds. Um, the four-two-three-one, which seems to be quite popular these days, doesn't it? Um, that was their starting lineup in their recent game before the international break, where they picked up a one all draw um, away to Coventry. Um, obviously, we know Angus Gunn. We were linked with him in the summer quite heavily. He said we opted for Cole Darlow. Um, he's not a bad goalkeeper. Um, and they got Stacey right back, Duffy and Gibson centre back, which is not a bad partnership. Both are quite um, quite a threat in the air. So that's something to keep an eye on. McCullum at left back in a double pivot. They have Sarah and McLean. Although uh, they are a bit more attacking uh, than it than it may seem, uh, they have Rowe on the right, which who we've just spoke about, seven goals, two assists this season. Gibbs, uh, Plaquetta, and Ida up front, and obviously they've got Josh Sargent as well, who who may also start. So um, it's literally like for like. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a tough battle, um, I think. Um, looking at um, their results out of the seventeen points they've. Um, accumulated this season 12 of them are at home they've picked up four wins and they've only lost one and that was at home to Leicester which is you know nothing to be ashamed about is it so so they've picked up four wins out of five at home so it, it's going to be a real tough battle guys um I think it's going to be quite a high scoring game I think I think it'll be like um I don't know three or four goals in the game um and it's going to be tough um obviously Daniel Farker I mean, he hasn't he hasn't got a point to prove um I know he was sacked by Norwich, but you know they know what a good manager is. He got him, he got him promoted twice. You know, um, it, it, it's not his fault they they give him no ammunition when they, you know, when they eventually do get to the Premier League. Um, it's not, you know, it's not not his fault. And I think there there would it would have been a took a, a real top manager to keep that Norwich City side in the Premier League. So it's going to be an interesting one. It's quite a difficult game to have after the break. Actually, um, would much rather have a nice a nice home game, but. Yeah, it's a championship. They come thick and fast, these games. And uh, it's going to be a real bat- battle at uh, Carrow Road, Carro Road on Saturday. Um, but like I said, if we can keep Road quiet, if Byron can do a job on him, then I, I think we um, sort of suffocate a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, their main attacking threat, to be honest. As you can see, in recent years, we fared quite well against Norwich. Um Actually, we've won three of our last four games at Carrow Road. Um, obviously, we don't want to go too far back because the further back you go, the less relevant it gets. But um, yeah, we, we, we don't do too badly at Carrow Road. But as you can see, it's always a quite a high scoring game in whatever division we've played them in. Um, there's not many clean sheets around. Um, obviously, we won our last two games against them in the Premier League. Um, but yeah, um, it's going to be a tricky one. Um, but it's good to see that in recent years we have sort of got the better of them at Carrow Road. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it's going to be a hard one, guys. But um, I think my score prediction is going to be 2-1 leads. Um, I think it's going to be a real attacking game end-to-end. Um, even though we've, we've, we've got quite a bit better defensively and we sort of limit the, our opponents lately to very, very few chances. Um, I think this might be like a little bit more of a basketball game, um, you know. And but like I said, if we can if we can keep their winger quiet, um, if Byron can do a job on him, I think that that stands us in good stead. But yeah, my match prediction is going to be um, Norwich City one, Leeds United two. Get your uh, predictions in the comment section below. Starting lineup, match match result, and and whatever else you want to talk about, guys. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. And um, I'll be doing a match review after the game on Saturday. So enjoy your weekend, guys. And if you're travelling to Carrow Road, have a safe journey and enjoy the game. And I shall speak to you all soon.